are so many ancient myths and legends surrounding these hills. Forget about Westeros. This is the real land of the dragons. The Welsh dragon is said to be the battle standard of King Arthur, and legend has it he sleeps somewhere in these hills alongside his warriors, fully battle ready, waiting for their call to arms. A tale is told of a Welshman in London who returned to Wales with a wise man. They discovered the entrance to a great cavern and inside found thousands of warriors sleeping yet prepared for battle. One amongst them was singled out by his battle axe and crown of gold. These were Arthur and his men who readied for the day when the Black Eagle and the Golden Eagle are at war. After returning twice, the traveller never did find the entrance to that cavern. Ever again. Welcome back guys. If you saw my last video on the subject, you will know I recently decided not to upgrade to the Lumix S1H. Well, I was contacted about a trial and I jumped at the chance to get my hands on one. I decided to make a video and it was a perfect excuse for a road trip. So stay tuned as I have some epic stuff to show you. So here we go, road trip time. The purpose of this video is to get out to some cool locations, have some fun and see what the S1H can do. Wales, here we come. We've all seen the full specs of this camera, they're all over the internet. So we're putting the spec sheet and manual away and testing this camera out on location. At the end, I'll refer back to my previous thoughts and see if I've changed my mind. We're using the GH5 here to capture the goings on and the S1H to shoot the cinematic sequences. I'll grade and crop the S1H footage so you can clearly see which is which. Let's get started. It's our first time in the Bracken Beacons. So where are we going? We're going to a place in Wales called the Brecon Beacons. It's a national park. I live in a county called Devon in the southwest of England. On our doorstep, we have some of the most beautiful scenery the UK has to offer, but it's nice to get out of your own backyard. Wales is a stunning part of the UK. The Brecon Beacons are only two to three hours away and neither of us have been before, so we thought it was a great idea. It's an area steeped in history, myth and legend. Another interesting fact is SAS selection takes place here, so the terrain must be pretty special. Fog can be cool. That looks ominous. It does, doesn't it? That looks like I'm going to be having every layer that I've got with me on when I get out of this one. One thing I do love about this is the screen. That flips up like that, or out. So you've got the best of both. Good job. But it feels like it's indestructible. Yeah, it is built like a tank. Oh my god, that is freezing. Oh, it's so gold. Oh. YouTube, meet Bitch. One of my oldest and best friends and a budding photographer with a great eye and great ideas. I was chuffed when he was keen to help me out with this video. Expect to see more of him in future videos. We love this stuff. Well, in the winter. Warm enough? Oh, I've got like 106 layers and I'm still cold. Zoom is this way. It's not heavy at all. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy this because coming back up is going to be the hard bit. It's a long way down, isn't it? So the setup I'm using here is of course the S1H, the 24-105 f4 native lens mounted on the DJI Ronin S. All of the footage you see is Cinema 4K DCI resolution, 10-bit V-Log, recorded internally, and I'm switching between 24 and 60 frames per second. I saved them to C1 and C2 custom mode so it's quick and easy to switch between the two. I'm focusing manually as well. 
I also had a Tiffin variable ND filter in my pocket, but I didn't actually need it here because it was really dark. So let's see what it can do. First impressions? Well, just look at it. There are so many ways to describe what this footage looks like, but they all kind of fall a bit short. So for now, I'll just let the camera do the talking. I really wish you could see this on a 5K monitor without online compression. One of the first things that struck me was the design of this camera. As a GH5 and GH5S shooter, it felt instantly familiar the second I picked it up and turned it on. No digging through menus to find what you need, everything's just kind of where it should be. Not particularly relevant here, but as a wedding filmmaker I'm pleased to see there are LEDs front and back so you can actually see from a distance when the camera is rolling. Also there's no display button positioned exactly where your thumb sits, so no hitting that one accidentally. The rear monitor came into its own working on a gimbal. Not only is it so versatile with the ability to tilt and swivel, but it's also higher resolution than the GH5S, which I really noticed. It made focusing manually on the fly really, really easy. Don't fall. <laughs> I'm not carrying you back up that hill if you fall. Oh, you got to be down there now. <laughs> So slippery. The setup worked perfectly on the Ronin. No need for counterweights or offset mounting plates, it was quick and easy to balance. The camera did sit quite far to the left, but there was still more room to go. The added size and weight did mean it felt a little bit less manoeuvrable, and yes, the Ronin had to work a little harder, but the flip side of that is it was really easy to get silky smooth shots. One feature I loved was the ability to run two zebras simultaneously, so that you can monitor your highlights and your skin tones at the same time. Super helpful. Okay, time to move on. It's colder than it looks. There's no snow, no ice. But it's cold. That wind. We're just having a good moan about the weather. Because we come all this way and sure. it's just grey. I'm not sure Wales was sunny once. Once, yeah. Recorded the date. 1864. <laughs> it's very beautiful though. When you're here in person, it kind of could resemble the opening scenes of like. Look at that! Macbeth. Yeah, I mean, that is just awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Even Siri doesn't know where we are. So we came over the bridge, we came over the river, and the map just stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I can't read any of these signs. Merthyr Tidville. Merthyr Tidville. Well, I mean, I can feel that here on my feet now. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Um, and here we are going to the highest peak in south of Snowdonia. You did not tell me that before we came out. Do you want to go up it? No. Come all this way, I probably didn't set off early enough. This time of year, how quickly you lose light, especially on a day like today, was just overcast and grey. It's currently 20 past two, and all the cars have got their headlights on. How far have we driven? We haven't seen one service station. What happens if you need petrol? <laughs> Siri just said turn left up to Food Road, and we're really hungry. But I'm not convinced. How do you pronounce this? Ford. At the roundabout, take the first exit onto Food Road. Food. Double F. In 1.6 miles, arrive at my fan. So we finally made it to the foot of the mountains. To say it was bleak would be an understatement. It was howling with driving wind and thick fog. Yeah. It's so ominous. You can see why there are so many myths and legends here. It's so eerie, but I absolutely love the place. 
there somewhere is the summit. If you look it up on Instagram, you'll see exactly why we were so keen to come here. The views are unreal. As much as we wanted to carry on, getting lost in thick fog on a mountain when you're also losing daylight, nah. It then started to rain, so we thought better of it and did the sensible thing. We started to head back. You can get decent footage in good conditions from pretty much any camera on the market today, but shooting in weather like this is the real test. The S1H smashed it, still coming up with the goods, despite visibility being next to zero. I love the mood and atmosphere in this footage. Our day trip to the Brecon Beacons was done. Will we be back? Hell yes, I love the place and now I just have to experience it in better weather. As soon as we set off, the rain got heavier and heavier, so we have definitely made the right decision and it was definitely time to head back to England. But not before a quick pit stop. This is the only food we'd seen all day. How could we resist? Wales is so cold. Unbelievable. The drive home was grim. Bish was absolutely loving the driving conditions, but at least it gave me a chance to really push the camera in low light. These shots were all at 6400 ISO and up, at only f4 aperture and no noise reduction whatsoever. Impressively clean. Overall, it was a successful day, but the weather was a shame and we felt we needed better conditions to really see what this camera can do. Well, we didn't have to wait long. So we're on our way to Dartmoor and we're chasing the sunrise. It's absolutely freezing this morning. We thought it'd be a good idea to try and get some more footage of the S1H with a sky like that. Look at that. But we're chasing it, we've got 30 minutes. The sun comes up. So excuse the noisy footage, but it's actually really dark. I think I've never been up here like been the only one up here. It's great first thing in the morning. is Dartmoor, quite possibly my favourite place on earth. I come here so often but it never fails to astonish me. It's such a magical place where the famous Dartmoor ponies run wild and the light, when it's on form, absolutely blows your mind. The legend that is Steven Spielberg, after filming the movie War Horse right here, said, never in my long career have I ever been gifted with such an abundance of natural beauty as I experienced filming War Horse on Dartmoor. Yeah, he's not wrong. conditions I was finally starting to get a feel for how good this camera actually is. When shooting on location in vlog, even when using a monitoring LUT, you never really know how good it looks until you get home and properly review it. But you know that feeling you get when you can tell it's going to look insane? Yeah, I was very much getting that here. I felt like I was holding the perfect travel camera. I could see in the monitor that the dynamic range shooting directly into the sun was something else. The highlight roll off looked very film like, so smooth. The sun was now getting higher and higher in the sky, so we decided to move on to another location. Okay, so we just got some good stuff. The sunrise on Haytor. Is that icy? That was me sliding, yeah. Was it? 
That's going to be a good outtake. <laughs> that raised my heart rate. A massive Land Rover Discovery just bounded around <laughs> the corner. I think the only way that the route that we're taking can get worse is if it literally took us off road. It, well, I don't know. it basically is. Oh, no. oh, on that note. <laughs> oh, that is ice and I was losing it then. We're currently in a lake. That water is like glass, it's like a mirror. The deep blue sky and the contrasting earthy tones made the colours in this camera truly shine. Just beautiful. The S1H is unique in the S series lineup as it's in the Varicam colour space and it really shows. Okay, what's the Ibis like? Unreal. And then there's the Ibis being able to fill 105mm in a moving vehicle. That's just mind blowing. And so from sunrise on Dartmoor to sunset. Before I summarise my thoughts on the S1H, I thought I'd quickly just say a massive thanks to you guys if you've watched through this far. If you liked it, please do give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe. A massive thanks to Bish for all his help on this video and the biggest thanks goes to David for contacting me after seeing my last video. Top man. I'm just going to go over my favourite things of the S1H. Number one is the overall design of the camera. If like me you currently or have shot on a GH5 you will have this camera up and running so quickly. Number two is the rear screen. The ability to tilt and swivel is great but also the higher resolution just makes everything easier. Number three has to be the low light capability. The GH5S is great but the S1H is a step up again. Number four, the IBIS. I was able to shoot at 105mm handheld in a moving vehicle speaks for itself. Number five would be the dynamic range. It's basically witchcraft. Number six is colour. This is probably the one feature of the S1H that is really winning me over. So I can honestly say there is absolutely nothing about this camera that would completely put me off it. We all know there's a crop at 4K, 60, 10 bit. Yes, I'd prefer it if there wasn't, but when I was out using it, I didn't find it an issue. It's still Super 35 at the end of the day, which looks great. The lens lineup at the moment is still limited. The L mount is still very new, so it's understandable, and that's obviously gonna change in the coming weeks and months. The autofocus. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not the kind of shooter that uses autofocus. I prefer to shoot manually. Is it as good as other brands' autofocus systems? No. Is it usable? Probably. So to bring this video to a close, I will admit to loving this camera. I knew this would happen. <sighs> The colour science, the dynamic range, the detail it picks up and that full frame depth of field combined to create basically magic. A cinema camera in a hybrid body, the best of the GH5 and the GH5S rolled into one and fed steroids. But have I changed my mind? Partly. I do stand by much of what I said in my previous video. My rational mind is still telling me I don't need it. But is the S1H the best hybrid camera for run and gun filmmakers currently on the market? I know what I think, so I'm definitely not going to rule out buying one, or am I? You don't need it, you don't need one. I'm going to decide in the spring. And so on one final note, I'd like to say Panasonic, take a bow. The S1H is so good, I tip my hat.
That'll do. Do you know another camera I'd love to try? 